Well, good morning. It is a good morning in Orlando. The American Academy of Anti-AG Medicine, this event is kind of the beginning of the future of medicine. So it's with great pleasure that I, Nick Delgado, I'm president of Ultimate Medical Research, am able to introduce the next speaker. Sherry Lieberman, Dr. Sherry Lieberman, PhD, is the author of The Gluten Connection. She is able to be reached at docdrsherry, S-H-A-R-I dot net. Her talk this morning is the integrative approach to cancer therapy. What works? In this presentation this morning, she'll be looking at and presenting to you the mechanism of action of nutraceuticals with respect to cancer. We'll be reviewing the evidence-based research on antioxidants and looking at the ways and methods to improve the outcome of conventional cancer therapy. Dr. Sherry Lieberman is the founding dean of New York Chiropractic College MS degree in clinical nutrition. She is an industry consultant and a peer review for scientific publications. She has published many scientific research papers and is a presenter on numerous scientific conferences. I see her all over the world. It's with great pleasure, her energy, her knowledge, enthusiasm. I would like to introduce now Dr. Sherry Lieberman. Again, an integrative approach to the treatments of cancer. Good morning. Thank you for waking up for me. <laughs> it's very early. I want to let you know that if you've seen me present cases before, these are completely new, brand new, fresh off, fresh off the press. I want to start by discussing and perhaps dispelling some myths. I don't know if you've come across this in your practice. I have in mind where I have a patient coming in, I'm telling them to take antioxidants and their oncologist is telling them no and the patient is in the middle, and it's really a horrible position. I would really love all of you to download this paper. It's absolutely free, and it's at my very dear friend and colleague's website, drsimone.com. It's D-R-S-I-M-O-N-E.com. And this is part one of the review, and there's another paper there as well. Um, it's been published in a scientific journal. And I just want to tell you a little bit about what it says. And by the way, he's a board-certified radiation oncologist um, who really embraces integrative medicine. There have been 50 human clinical randomized or observational studies. And there's been over 8,500 patients who have used beta carotene, you know, the common antioxidants, all the ones that we're um, familiar with, including B vitamins, vitamin D and vitamin K and glutathione, either as single agents or in combination. Most of us who practice integrative medicine will not use just one antioxidant. And since the 1970s, 280 peer-reviewed in vitro and in vivo studies, including the 50 human studies, have concluded that patients who are given nutrients have consistently shown that non-prescription antioxidants and other nutrients do not interfere with therapeutic modalities for cancer. Now, I want to turn your attention to non-prescription. Oncologists use prescription synthetic antioxidants, don't even bat an eye, to rescue patients from, for example, adriamycin toxicity, things like amophistine. They even use certain types of SOD. But when it comes to natural antioxidants, I don't know if they're arrogant or ignorant or both, but as I said before, there's numerous scientific data to support the use of antioxidants with cancer patients. Furthermore, what these studies have shown is that these nutrients enhance the killing of the therapeutic modalities for cancer, while at the same time decreasing the side effects. Why wouldn't you use them? It doesn't make any sense. The only answer is, once again, they're not up to date, they're not reading the literature, and they're still listening to this idiotic study from Sloan Kettering where a physician put 
vitamin C in a petri dish with cancer cells and went, oh, it makes them grow. It, 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 oh, actually, he did it with normal cells. Also, after that study was done, not only were his results refuted, his study was never published. Doesn't that tell you something about the study? And they're still, they're still talking about this. In 15 human studies, over 3,700 patients who took non-prescription antioxidants and other nutrients had increased survival. We have drugs on the market like Herbitux and a number of other chemotherapeutic agents. They don't increase survival. If you, if you read between the lines and you actually pull the data and read it, what it does is it increases disease-free survival. What does that mean? It means you die at a year whether you took the drug or not. Instead of progressing at four months, you progressed at six months. But if you died at one year, what does that tell you? Your cancer was accelerated anyway. This is another study done also by an integrative uh, oncologist by the name of Keith, Dr. Keith Block. Many of you may be familiar with him. He also reviewed 845 articles. He um, took 19 trials because they actually did a meta-analysis. Antioxidants were evaluated, uh, were glutathione, melatonin, vitamin A, an antioxidant mixture, vitamin C, NAC, vitamin E, and ellagic acid. Subjects of most studies had advanced or relapsed cancer. None of the trials reported evidence of significant decreases in efficacy from antioxidant supplementation during chemotherapy. Many of the studies indicated that the antioxidant supplementation, once again, resulted in either increased survival, increased tumor responses, or both, as well as fewer toxicities than controls. And then they're saying large, well-designed studies of antioxidant supplementation with concurrent chemotherapy are warranted. What are we waiting for? This isn't happening because these substances are not patentable. The government should be kicking in money to be funding these studies. A phase two study involving 44 patients with advanced cancer, adherence to a regimen including high amounts of dietary and supplementary antioxidants was found to increase body weight. What's one of the major things that we see with cancer patients is cancer cachexia. And what do most oncologists give patients with cancer cachexia? Sustain which is loaded with fat and loaded with sugar. Wonderful for a cancer patient. If the metastasis isn't spreading fast enough, that type of nutrition is like gasoline on a fire. It was also found to decrease pro-inflammatory cytokines and improve the quality of life over a period of four months. They received 400 milli also 400 milligrams of polyphenols through their diet, and took alpha-lipoic acid, uh, carbocysteine, vitamin E, vitamin A, vitamin C, and omega-3s daily. How many studies do we need? We don't, have any, we don't have any negative studies. They also took their prescription medications. The quality of life improved markedly. By the end of the study, 22 of the 39 patients were responders or high responders. These results suggest that an integrative program, including high amounts of antioxidants in the diet and through supplementation, may be safe and effective in improving symptoms of low appetite. So it improves appetite, improves weight loss, diminishes, um, improves the quality of life with advanced stages of cancer. And they're saying, based on the findings, a randomized phase three study is warranted. I don't know that that's ever gonna happen in my lifetime. I also want to say something about this study that is important. Some of the studies that have been published looked at one antioxidant with cancer. You cannot do that. You have to use a mixed approach. And I'm just going to tell you quickly why. If you take a high amount of vitamin E without vitamin C, it can turn to be a prooxidant and do the opposite of what it's supposed to do.